Hey, what's going on, y'all? This is Herbie from lifeisatrucker.com. Most of y'all know that I drove for over 13 years. Some of y'all don't know that I've stopped driving, and most of y'all don't know that I now work in the receiving department at a major distribution center in Greensboro, or right outside of Greensboro. So what I want to share with you is some insight and information coming from that receiving department. You know, based on what I've encountered. But a lot of it is stuff that I've already mentioned before. If you're familiar with my site and you've been watching the videos, you've gotten some of this before. But I'm just going to tell you how it comes into play where I am now. So number one is always be on time. Always be on time. You hear that a lot from good advice. <laughs> and you hear it because a lot of drivers blow it off and they don't take it seriously don't take appointments seriously and you hear them saying I get there when I get there especially on the CB but you don't want to do that you don't want to have that uh, way of looking at it and if you come our building we got two buildings one building closes at three o'clock you may deliver there the other building uh, stop receiving at seven o'clock and we can receive later than that but it depends on whether we need the merchandise and how much room we have inside the warehouse. But you may have an appointment time prior to three. And if you show up after three, the whole building is closed. We got another building, but the reason you was going to the other building is because we have enough of that stuff on hand and we got limited space in that building. So there's a, a, a huge chance that we'll tell you you need to wait till tomorrow. Also, there's breaks, there's meetings. So we used to have a meeting at 5.30 every day. Now we only have it every now and then. But after the meeting, there's a break. And if we don't have the meeting, there's a break at 5.30. We try to get you unloaded. If you get there, if you, but if you're scheduled at 4.30, you come on time, there's no problem. You get there, they schedule at 4.30, you come at 5. And we can't get to you until 5.10 or something like that. You're not going to get unloaded until after the meeting and after break. So, you know, you blowing off the appointment time can mean a lot. Now, in addition to that, your appointment may be to bring us parts that we need to go out on large orders, you know. And so, not being there on time could mean that the merchandise not going out when it's supposed to to get to the customer by the guaranteed time. And of course, my company is gonna be very unhappy with your company. So keep in mind, always be on time. The best way to do that is to leave early. Not early enough to get there 10 or 15 minutes early or half an hour early. I actually left so that I can get to where I was going as soon as possible. And if you see that you can get somewhere early, a lot of times we take drivers early. That drivers, drivers do come early. And many other shippers and receivers will take you early. It just varies depending on how the company is set up and what the company has going on. I used to call all the time to see if I could deliver unless I already knew the company or it was a type of company that I had reason to believe that calling will actually <laughs> tell them, get them, let you hear them say, don't come. Don't come. Wait till your appointment time. Because sometimes they'll say that. But they'll actually take you if you get there. Um, with us, we don't mind if you call. And you might actually... Somebody else does the planning and coordination for the load, not us in shipping and receiving. It's the next stage up. Uh, pretty much, they'll tell you to come on in. And most likely, we'll get you unloaded. Now, number two, let's move on. Uh, this is supposed to be short. It's already longer than it's supposed to be. And I just added another extra 20 seconds. Number two, attitude, attitude, attitude. Have a good attitude. Now, you know, we all encounter things. You might have it out with your dispatcher. You might have had uh, unpleasant conversation with your significant other or something. You might have been going at it with somebody on the CB radio prior to you needing to call us or you arriving and... What you need to do is be mindful of your thoughts so that you don't let what might have been a bad experience prior to you interacting with someone that's shipping and receiving 
spill over into your communication with the person that's shipping and receiving that had nothing to do with it, you know? And that's easy to happen. Sometimes as a driver, you'll encounter people with a nasty attitude and you're like, well, now you know, why are you acting like that? You know, I've done nothing to you. And so these things happen. You might call your dispatcher and experience that, you know, it's unnecessary. And of course it's unfair to you. So be mindful of your own thoughts and attitude. And you also got to do that when you're talking to your dispatcher after getting off the phone with your spouse. Or when you're talking to your spouse after getting off the phone to your dispatcher, uh, with your dispatcher. Or when needing to communicate with either of them because they're calling you and you got an answer, but you just got through arguing with someone on CB radio. So be mindful of your thoughts and aware of your attitude and not letting that in, uh, interfere with how you are communicating with other people. Three. Slow down. <laughs> Slow down when going around curves and making turns. Err on the side of caution. You know, just because you can make a turn at a certain speed without flipping the truck doesn't mean that the freight is going to maintain and be stable through that turn. So you got to keep in mind how high the pallets are and the material that is on the pallets, what they're made out of. Some boxes are more slippery, slippery, slippery than others. And so, you know, when you, stuff is thrown all over the trailer, of course, that leads to potential damage. You got claims and everything. But not only that, it could hold you up from getting unloaded because you can't just drive in with a forklift, pull it out of the trailer. You got to scrape, get stuff up off the floor, try to get the pallets back organized and stacked so it's movable. So you hold yourself up doing that. And it's just better to work on having a mindset where you have a consideration for other people. You know, it's not you're afraid, it's our afraid, of course, but... You know, that comes into play when interacting with people in life in general, being more considerate, more thoughtful, and not just thinking about me, me, me. Hey, the truck ain't going to flip. That's cool. I can make it. So just being more aware, more aware, more aware of how you do things and how it impacts others. Hey, that's a good principle for life. Well, I, I just need you to apply it as a driver for handling freight, you know. And another thing is using the bathroom. You know, a lot of times companies may have a restroom for you to use. Sometimes you are aware of it, sometimes you're not. So if you need to use the bathroom or get some water or something, then ask the company. Like at our place, if the security let us know that you're coming and we're in the middle of doing something or we got to go by the door from one side to the other, we had to go by the door, we may beat you we may get outside before you come to the door and meet you there with the bolt cutters and everything. And so from the outside, you got a badge to come in and everything. You may assume that there is no bathroom or there isn't a water fountain. The water fountain is right there. Also, there's a little lounge, matter of fact, where the bathroom is. So we may tell you to go straight to the door and we'll be back with you. So ask if you need to use the bathroom. And But as part two, clean up behind yourself. Whenever you go to use a bathroom somewhere, ship a receiver, and even at the truck stops, act like you're a mature, responsible adult with some home training and clean up behind yourself. A lot of times we talk about how society looks at us, looks down on us, and says that we're nasty and can't do nothing but drive and uh then we're dirty and all that. But then you turn around and trash the bathroom at the truck stops and at the shippers and receivers. The difference is, if you come use our bathroom and you leave it nasty like that, we can pinpoint who it is. And a call can be made. 
Because, you know, it used to get to me at the truck stops that people would actually leave it so nasty and everything. But you can't figure out who, you know, you don't know who did it. Well, at our place, we can figure out who did it. And any, I wish that all shippers and receivers would be diligent in letting the company know that this, how this driver um, had a disregard for the facility because it's ridiculous. Now, we got always be on time. We got have a good attitude. We got when you ask, when you use the bathroom in the waiting areas or you're in the waiting area, be responsible, mature, and in how you leave the place, clean up behind yourself. And we got slowing down. What else was it? Backing up, backing up, backing up, backing up. Hey, practice backing up when you have free time. Practice backing up, whether it's in a truck stop or at a company's docks. Sometimes you got to stay at a company overnight and, you know, it's wide open. You can't damage anything back into the dock. Get a few practice runs in so that when you get to somewhere that you don't have a lot of time, then you can just back up to the dock without a problem. We had drivers come there, take them 10, 15 minutes to back up to the dock. And it's wide open, you know. Now, for us, well, that, that, it has caused a problem because if it's after 5, we got a meeting at 530. We're trying to get you in and get you out so you don't have to wait. But if it take you 15, 20 minutes to get to the dock, that's going to put us at the meeting time. We ain't going to have time to unload you. So you got to sit there and wait. And that's a shame. And, but even worse is some of the companies that you deliver to, you will have to back in off the road. And you won't have, you'll be blocking traffic and everything. And the longer it takes you to get out of that street and get straight enough that you can back up into that dock and out of the way, then the more antsy and impatient the traffic is going to be that's waiting on you. And the longer it takes, the more likely it is that people will take risks and they'll try to go around you and everything so they can continue on with their journey to nowhere. <laughs> you know, and that, of course, increases the likelihood that there's an incident because if you're at a certain angle and there's barely room to get by, you just got through bagging up enough so that they can get by they try to go through and you about to pull and you pull forward to uh, reposition. If it's very little space and they pull up, you're not even going to be able to see the vehicle uh, sometimes. All depending on position and everything. So the longer you take, the more impatient they get, the higher chances there is an incident. So practice backing when you have a chance to practice backing. It might be in the truck stop when you get there early. And, you know, most drivers will be just delighted that you asked them to spot for you if you that early that you scared you're going to hit something maybe there's no free hit to spot or maybe you want to actually practice between trucks but you don't want to take the chance of hitting anything get somebody to spot for you to make sure you don't hit anything and you can get that practice in and that's it y'all that's it uh i hope you take these serious i hope I, I, I hope that I've done a good job at explaining and giving you the, the insight to in a way that will motivate you to um, actually work on this stuff. And have a great day. Thanks for watching. And I'm about to get about this part. My break is over. Peace.